Hello, my beautiful friends. I am Laurel Bleedin Maffei with Illuminating Souls, welcoming you to this episode of Sleepy Bedtime Blessings, a podcast designed to help you rest, relax, and fall asleep, all while deepening in your connection with your beautiful team of angels who love you so. If we're meeting for the first time, I am an angelic practitioner, a spiritual teacher, and an encourager of souls. And this means that I have the best job ever. I get to encourage you. I get to help you connect with your angels and your divine wisdom. And my offerings include one-on-one angel sessions, soul mentoring, and a variety of classes designed to inspire your spirit. So I invite you to visit me at my website, illuminatingsouls.com. And you can also sign up for my daily inspiration email blast. And then you'll get an inspiring email from me every weekday. You also can find me over on Facebook at the Illuminating Souls Facebook page. So lots of ways for us to connect. And also, I love hearing from you. So if you're enjoying this podcast, you are invited to drop me an email and share with me a bit about how you're using this podcast. I'd love to know. And I also invite you to leave a review on iTunes. It really helps other people find the podcast. But for now. The angels and I are here to help you connect with divine love and also drift off to sleep. As most of you know, this podcast is born out of my deep love of sleep podcasts and also my deep love of the angels. So I blended the two together and have come up with this unlikely mashup for you. So I know that some of you do listen to the podcast to help you fall asleep and others of you listen during your waking hours. And then we have the blessing of keeping you company as you go about your day. And however you use this podcast, you have my blessing. But for right now, I'm going to focus on those of you who might be trying to drift off to sleep. So my experience as a listener of sleep podcasts for many years now is that they provide a focal point for my consciousness. You know, I happen to have a wandering mind, which can be a really good thing. But sometimes when I'm trying to drift off to sleep, my mind seeks to stay active and it makes it a little bit harder for me to drift off. I used to watch television to help go to sleep. And I don't know the exact reason why, but several years ago, it stopped working for me or or maybe a better way to say it is it stopped comforting me in the way it used to. And then I found my way to sleep podcasts and this idea that a loving, soothing, calming voice would be available for an hour or so while my mind wound down from the day really wound up being just the medicine I needed. I started off by listening to the Sleep With Me podcast by Andrew Ackerman, which I still adore. And then I found my way to Get Sleepy and Sleepy and some others. 
and they just delight me. It's a very gentle way to drift off to sleep. You know, for so much of our history, bedtime stories have been a part of our collective. You know, that experience that kicks in when we're a little bit drowsy and we can hear a comforting voice kind of off in the distance somewhere. You know, I think about when I used to go to sleep as a child. My sister and I shared a bedroom on the second floor. And so I could always hear my parents downstairs, whether they were watching television or talking and not so much that I could really hone in on what was being said, but just the murmuring of their voices or the TV downstairs comforted me. And I find that sleep podcasts, they do the same thing. So typically I turn the volume down lower than I would if I were listening to an audiobook. And then I get comfortable and it takes me a little bit of time to get comfortable in my body. I don't know if you've ever had a dog or a cat that scratches at the blankets and turns around and gets up and turns around again. I'm not that bad, but there's quite a bit of shuffling involved as I plump my pillows up just so and pull the blankets up just the way I like them and then get my earbuds in, and then I'm gone. (laughs) I find the journey of sleep to be such a mystery. We all do it, right? We all float into sleep in different ways. We have different relationships with our dream space and our sleep spaces, but it's something that we all find our way into. So my hope is that this podcast will be good company for you as you cozy on up and snuggle on in in whatever way is best for you. I love the ritual of bedtime. I don't know when it happened, but I love going to bed at the end of the day. (laughs) I don't know why. That makes me laugh. I have a life I love. I also love getting up in the morning. So I don't want you to think that I live my whole day waiting for bed. There are many times of the day that I love. But since this is a bedtime podcast, I get to wax poetic about my love of bedtime. There is just something so delicious about feeling myself getting tired at the end of the day. And I can hardly keep my eyes open. Like I can just feel like my body says, I don't care what it says on the clock, but we are ready to drift off. And my husband always has a laugh with me because you can just see it. It's written all over my face. I do not have a good poker face. And I say, okay, I'm going to bed (laughs) and I, I get up and crawl on in under the covers and drift off. More often than not, my husband stays up later than I do and I'm asleep by the time he gets into bed. But I just, I love that sensation of knowing that the end of the day is here and I have permission to rest and that in all likelihood more often than not I'm gonna feel better in the morning right I wake up feeling refreshed and ready for the next day and so whatever your relationship is with your bedtime I invite you to breathe in the love that is here for you and comfortable in whatever way works best for you. 
I'm somebody who tucks in the top sheet and the blanket. I know in the U.S. we most of us use top sheets and I think in the UK you mostly use duvet covers so whatever you have on your bed however you like it to be let it be just so and then I also have a big comforter and right now I have two extra blankets on top of the comforter it's awesome and I know some people like to wrap their legs up in their blankets like a burrito I prefer my legs to be free, <laughs> but they're under the covers. And so however you sleep, if you're burrito style, if you need one leg out, right, that's a great way to modulate temperature, having one leg free, whatever your sleep style is, get comfortable. And I already feel the angels bringing their love to us, to you. And the love here is so sweet. For those of you who might be new to the world of angels, they are celestial beings. They are the embodiment of divine love. And we all have them. And they are independent of any specific religion. I believe that this universe is created with love for every molecule of beingness, including us. And the angels infuse every broadcast that I do with waves of love for you. And that's the lovely thing about working with the angels is they are not bound by time or space. So even if you're listening to this five years from when I record it, the angels will join you in live time. And they will calibrate this energy to support where you are right now on your path. So I invite you to take some nice deep breaths in and just let go. Let go of whatever came before this moment and allow yourself to be present here and now in this beautiful wellspring of light that the angels are bringing forward for you. And I'm going to call the angels in now. I love the ritual of bringing them in with you. So I'm going to take a nice deep breath in and I invite you to do the same as we call ourselves forward into the heart of God. And beautiful angels on high, I invite you to join us here. I ask that you bring forward waves of love, of healing, of goodness, and of light in service to each of our beloveds listening to this message. I ask that you bring forward miracles, joy, serendipity, and inspiration in service to each of our unique paths here upon the planet. I am so grateful in this moment to be gathered together in a circle of light with you right now as the angels stream love upon us all. This world is filled with so much love for you. Even if you're unaware of it, it is here. And just like the leaves of a plant respond to sunlight, so does your spirit respond to divine light. So you don't need to know how this works. You don't need to direct it. We just invite you to receive it. 
and you can also bring your prayers and your intentions into this sacred circle. You can share them silently or even speak them aloud and the angels are receiving them from you. So what prayers are on your heart right now? There's an exercise that I sometimes will recommend in my classes. And it is simple. We invite you to ask the angels for help with five things in your life. That may sound so pedestrian, but it is because we are not very good at asking for help. Most of us are fantastic at giving. But there's this weird paradox about asking and receiving because we might think that we're taking the angels away from something more important. You see, we don't have to teach you how to pray and ask on the behalf of others. This is something you do all the time. This is why we are opening the gateway for you to ask for yourself. So is there a place in life where you would like to experience more ease? Is there a burden or a fear that you would like help in lifting and clearing? Is there a dream that is just floating on the edge of your consciousness that you would like help in having clarity about. Would you like support in blossoming open into whatever comes next for you? This is your invitation to ask the angels for help in five different areas of your life. And it can be more than five and it can be fewer than five. It doesn't have to be exactly five. And that message is for all my beautiful rule followers out there. It is merely a suggestion, an invitation, something that will hopefully invoke a sense of playfulness within you. So take a deep breath in and connect with your heart. For instance, as I go within, I think I would love to have a deeper sense of vitality and well-being. I'm pretty healthy right now, thank goodness, but I love the word vitality and the concept of it. I would love to have a greater sense of vitality and well-being. I would also love support in creating a more of an in-person community, similar to the vibrancy that I experienced when I lived in Los Angeles. So those are two of the five that I would ask for help with. I don't know what the other three would be right now because I'm less focused on my own creations and more present to cultivating this beautiful energy field for you. But I thought I would share them as an example of how I process these invitations. So if you notice, I didn't have to go into great detail. I just call the vibration of what it is I seek support with into my heart. And the angels already know that which I speak of. So I just bring these into the light. And I love that I don't have to know how these are going to show up or be created. It's not my job to know. Because there is an authentic 
divine life force within me that is born of the breath of God, that is born of the big, bright, beautiful universe. And if this is true for me, this is true of you as well. So I invite you to take another deep breath in, just calling in the goodness, calling in the love, calling in the vitality and well-being that is available for you, through you, with you, right now. And that as you drift off to sleep, the angels will continue supporting you and blossoming open even more brightly into the beauty of your true spirit. You are a blessing here on earth. You are a gift in this world. You are precious. You carry magic within you. And this world is so much better because you are here. So my beloved friend, I wish you the sweetest of dreams. You can drift off whenever you feel guided. And while you rest, the angels will watch over you. They will continue to help clear and balance your energy field and infuse you with love. So while you rest, I'm going to tell you a story. All right, and for our story time tonight. We are coming upon Christmas very quickly, and so this is going to be a Christmas-themed episode. At first, I thought I would go into the Wayback Files, aka Google Books, and look for some old Christmas stories or articles that I could read to you, because I love doing that. But the then I kind of got excited about co-authoring a Christmas bedtime story for you with chat GPT, which I shared about with you two episodes ago. So just as a refresher, chat GPT is this AI program. AI stands for artificial intelligence and you can write with it. It's amazing, amazing. And so I spent part of yesterday morning writing a story for you with chat GPT. Now, the story is a bit rambling and it's not meant to be the most awesome story ever, but It contains some really lovely concepts and invitations, and it is really meant to be a bedtime story, so not necessarily a story that will keep you riveted and awake, but a sweet story to help keep you company. And I just have to say, if you have not given ChatGPT a try yet, I invite you to do so. I am finding that it is sparking my creativity in such bright and beautiful ways. And perhaps I'll talk about that more in another episode. But for now, I have this very sweet story to share with you. So you cozy up and I'm going to read to you. It was the week before Christmas and Emily lay in bed at night, feeling a mix of excitement and worry. This year had been especially hard for her family, with money tight and struggles to make ends meet. On top of that, Emily had been arguing with her mom earlier that day, which left her feeling frustrated and upset. She had hoped that Christmas would bring some much-needed miracles and joy, but with each passing day her worries seemed to grow. 
As she tried to fall asleep, she couldn't shake the feeling that something was missing. She whispered a prayer for help and peace, and then let go of her upset, handing it over to the angels to help diffuse the tension and heal her heart. And that was when the angel appeared. Emily had drifted off to that moment between waking and sleep. She had been staring at the ceiling, wondering what kind of Christmas they would have this year, when she found herself in a beautiful dreamland. The air was filled with warmth and light of Christmas and the sky was a deep shade of midnight blue dotted with twinkling stars and a full moon that shone like a silver coin. The ground was blanketed in a thick layer of sparkling snow, and the trees were adorned with sparkling lights and shiny ornaments, too. At the end of her bed, Emily saw a beautiful angel with a warm smile on her face. She was dressed in a flowing white gown with wings as bright as the sun and golden hair that cascaded down her back. Her eyes shone with a deep, loving light. Emily, my dear, the angel said softly, I have come to take you on a special journey to learn about the true meaning of Christmas. The angel was radiating love and warmth, and Emily wasn't sure if this was a dream or reality, but the angel's sparkling eyes reassured her that all was well. The angel embraced Emily, and Emily could feel her heart opening wide. The angel reached out her hand and Emily hesitatingly took it, allowing the angel to help her out of bed. The angel wrapped her wings around Emily and together they flew through the dreamland, high above the twinkling lights of the city. The angel began telling Emily about the love and light of Christmas and how it was time to spread joy and happiness to others. The angel said, Christmas is a time to remember that we are all loved and cared for by a higher power, a divine love that is always with us, no matter where we are or what we are going through. Emily felt an immense love and warmth emanating from the angel, and she felt her own heart opening wide in response. The angel continued, Divine love is a powerful force, Emily. It is the love that comes from God, the love that created the universe and all that is in it. This love is all-encompassing, all forgiving, and all healing. It is a love that never fades, never falters, and never fails. It is a love that is always with us, no matter where we are or what we are going through. And it is this love that brings about the miracles and blessings that we see in the world the angel continued. It is this love that brings hope to those who are in despair, joy to those who are in sorrow, and healing to those who are in pain. It is this love that brings light to the darkness and helps us to see the beauty in the world around us. As the angel spoke, Emily felt a sense of peace and happiness wash over her. She knew that the angel's words were true, and she felt grateful for the love and guidance she was receiving. As Emily and the angel flew, 
the angel also began to speak about the power of forgiveness. Forgiveness is one of the greatest gifts that we can give to ourselves and others, the angel said. It allows us to let go of negative emotions like anger and resentment and to open our hearts to love and healing. It is a powerful force that can bring about great transformation and blessings in our lives. But sometimes forgiveness can be hard, the angel continued. We may feel hurt or wronged by someone and it can be difficult to let go of that pain and hurt. That's when we need to remember the love and light that surrounds us and to ask for guidance and help from a higher power. And that's where the power of prayer comes in, the angel said, her voice soft and soothing. When we pray for forgiveness, We are opening our hearts to the divine love that surrounds us. We are asking for guidance and strength to forgive ourselves and others and to embrace the love and light that is always available to us. As the angel spoke, Emily felt a sense of peace and understanding washing over her. From high above, The angel brought Emily to soar above her family's home. She invited Emily to bring a prayer for her family, especially her mother, into her heart. Emily closed her eyes and focused on the love and care she had for her family, sending a quiet prayer for their well-being and happiness. She asked for strength and guidance to let go of the upset that had been weighing her down and to open her heart to forgiveness. She asked for the love and light of the divine to surround her family and to bring them joy, peace, and hope. As she finished her prayer, Emily opened her eyes to see her home being infused with a beautiful golden light. She watched in awe as the angels wove the light all around her home, as they did so, spreading love and warmth to every corner of her house. She could feel the light in her heart, filling her with a sense of peace and joy. She knew that her prayer had been heard and that her family would be blessed and protected by the love and the light of the divine. The angel explained that this was what happened when she prayed and that by opening her heart and expressing her love and care for others, Emily was able to connect with the divine love that was always present and allow it to flow through her and into the world. Whenever you pray, Emily, the angel said, you are opening yourself up to the love and blessings of the divine. And when you share that love and light with others, you bring joy and hope to the world. As the dream began to fade, and Emily found herself back in her bed. She felt grateful and inspired by the beautiful lesson of prayer and divine love. She knew that she would always remember the angel's words and the power of prayer to bring light and love to the world. The next morning, Emily woke up feeling refreshed and renewed She had a feeling that something special had happened during the night. And as she got out of bed and made her way to the kitchen, she couldn't wait to see what the day would bring. As she entered the kitchen, 
She saw her mother standing at the stove cooking breakfast. Emily's heart skipped a beat as she realized that this was the moment of truth. Would her mother still be upset from the argument the previous night? Or would the love and forgiveness that Emily had prayed for make a difference? To Emily's surprise, her mother turned around and smiled warmly at her. Good morning, sweetie, she said, her voice filled with love and tenderness. I hope you had a good night's sleep. I am sorry about the argument we had last night, and I'm sorry to have upset you. Emily was taken by surprise by her mother's words and felt her heart fill with love and gratitude. She knew that this was the result of the prayers and guidance of the angel, and she felt truly blessed. It's okay, Mom, Emily said, giving her mother a hug. I forgive you, and I'm sorry too. I love you. Her mother hugged her back, tears of joy in her eyes. I love you too, Emily, she said. And as they hugged, Emily and her mom were surrounded by a warm, loving light. It was the light of the angels who had been watching over them and guiding them on their journey. The angels were radiating love and warmth, and Emily and her mom could feel their hearts opening wide in response as they stood there, embracing each other in love and forgiveness. Emily knew this Christmas was going to be one of the best ones ever. She was filled with joy, hope, and gratitude, and she knew that the love and light of the holiday season would continue to guide and bless her and her family for years to come. The end. <laughs> and that beautiful story was written by Chat GPT. I served as the director, the choreographer, perhaps. I gave it prompts, for instance. I asked it to have the angel teach about forgiveness. It was my idea that Emily would have been fighting with her mom. Initially, Emily was a very little girl, but then I sort of aged her to be a teenager. Now I'm not sure how old she is, but her mom still lives with her, or she still lives with her mom. And I also gave the AI the vision of the angel flying Emily over her house and asking Emily to bring a prayer into her heart. And then I fed it the vision of the home being filled with light as the angels wove the light in and out of the house in response to Emily's prayer. So the vision of that was mine, but the writing of that was chat GPT. It was so lovely to get to write this story together. I feel like it absolutely has my heart and my spirit in it. But what chat GPT did is it made it so easy to write this story. That's why I say my creativity is in overdrive right now because I often find the discipline of writing to be hard, but to write a few sentences and collaborate with this amazing AI technology, it's as if a limitation has been cleared for me, and maybe for you too. And this isn't the only thing that ChatGPT does. I also asked it to create a holiday menu for us. So, let's imagine for a moment that somehow through the miracle of travel and light and sound that we were able to get together for a lovely Christmas meal. Now, 
I'm raised Jewish, so I don't necessarily know how to put together a really good Christmas meal. I'm assuming good food is involved for sure. And I also wanted to make it vegan because I know many of you out there are vegan. And so I would want to make this really easy on you. Now, I could have asked it to make it gluten free. And if you were really coming in person, I would do that. But I forgot to ask that part. So there may be gluten involved, but it is vegan. And so I have a lovely menu for us that I want to share with you. Since we're creating this all on the astral realm, there is no limitation when it comes to price or our ability to cook these things. Let's assume we are going to have an amazing team of virtual chefs create this menu for us. And this is just a starting point. If, if we were really going to do this, we would go back and forth and decide from there. But this will get us started. So we're going to start off. There's going to be five for each category. So let's start off with the appetizers because, you know, we're going to want some appetizers because we're going to probably be standing around and hugging each other and laughing and talking and, you know, kind of getting settled in. So here are our appetizers for our holiday meal. Grilled vegetables with hummus a colorful and flavorful appetizer that's sure to impress your guests. That would be you. Um, grilled vegetables such as bell peppers, zucchini, and eggplant are paired with creamy hummus for dipping. And let's assume we're going to have a lot of different kinds of hummus and other kinds of dips as well. You know, like a vegan charcuterie board, which would be lovely. Perhaps on this board will be roasted tomato and basil crostini, a simple yet elegant appetizer that's perfect for a holiday party. Crispy slices of baguette are topped with juicy roasted tomatoes and fresh basil drizzled with olive oil. Spiced nuts. These flavorful and crunchy nuts are the perfect snack to enjoy while sipping on a warm beverage. Toasted with a blend of spices and roasted to perfection, they make a tasty and addictive appetizer. And then also a roasted red pepper dip. Remember I said we would have more than just hummus. So this creamy and flavorful dip is sure to be a hit at your holiday gathering. Blended roasted red peppers and garlic are combined with tahini for a rich and satisfying dip. And then they're also recommending to put vegan cheese on our charcuterie board. I don't know much about vegan cheese, but I'm sure several of you out there have your favorites. So if we were going to do this virtual meetup, I would ask for your suggestions because I love some cheese and crackers. Now we're going to move on to the salad portion. So we've got an arugula and pear salad with balsamic vinaigrette, which also has toasted almonds on it. They're also recommending a kale and quinoa salad with a lemon tahini um, dressing. They say this hearty and nourishing salad is packed with nutrients and flavor. Massaged kale and cooked quinoa are combined with roasted vegetables and a lemon tahini dressing for delicious and satisfying salad. And something you should know about me, I typically am not fond of lemon flavored food. So if I were really making this, I would ask for a different suggestion. Maybe like a peanut sauce. Ooh, that would sound good, huh? <laughs> so Roasted beet and arugula salad, it would seem that ChatGPT is a big fan of arugula. With a citrus vinaigrette, this colorful and vibrant salad is a feast for the eyes as well as the taste buds. Roasted beets, arugula, and toasted walnuts are dressed with a citrus vinaigrette for a refreshing and flavorful salad. 
They're also recommending a spring mix and mandarin orange salad with poppy seed dressing. I love poppy seed dressing, but I'm kind of getting over all the citrus things they're having us. I'm thinking maybe some pomegranate seeds or something, something with some olives, something more savory. So again, I would work with ChatGPT on this. And then they're also recommending a Caesar salad with grilled tempa. I'm always a fan of a Caesar salad. But now we get to the mains, and these mains actually sound really yummy to me. We start off with a mushroom and lentil pot pie. This hearty and comforting main dish is perfect for a cold winter evening. A flaky pastry crust is filled with a savory mixture of mushrooms, lentils, and vegetables in a rich and creamy sauce. We also have a mushroom and chestnut roast. This hearty and flavorful roast is a perfect main dish for a vegan Christmas dinner. A mixture of mushrooms and chestnuts is seasoned with herbs and spices and roasted to perfection. We have a vegan nut roast. I don't know how similar that will be to the mushroom and chestnut roast. Um, It's a mixture of nuts, grains, and vegetables. And then we've got a stuffed acorn squash. I love squash like that. These adorable and delicious acorn squash are filled with a mixture of quinoa, cranberries, and nuts for colorful and flavorful main dish. I love that the AI is describing this as adorable and delicious. Well done, AI. Um, Then they're also... Um, recommending a vegan Wellington. So vegan beef is wrapped in a puff pastry. And I can't think of any kind of Wellington without thinking of Hell's Kitchen. Um, A weird association from all of my days of watching reality television. But wait, there's more. Hold on. The side sounds so good to me. Roasted root vegetables A medley of root vegetables such as carrots, parsnips, and beets is tossed with olive oil and herbs and roasted to a golden brown. I I actually do make my own roasted root vegetables, and they're yummy. These also sound good. Maple glazed Brussels sprouts. These sweet and savory Brussels sprouts are roasted until crispy and then glazed with maple syrup and Dijon mustard sauce. Then we have a quinoa and roasted vegetable stuffing. We are absolutely going to get our quinoa and vegetables in this meal. This flavorful and satisfying stuffing is made with quinoa roasted vegetables and a mixture of herbs and spices. Then we have mashed sweet potatoes with a maple syrup and pecans. Like what's wrong with that? That's awesome. I probably just would eat that. And then green beans with the lemon and butter sauce. Again, not such a fan of the lemon stuff, but, you know, I have guests and you may like lemon a lot, so we will make that for sure. And then we get to the best course ever, desserts. Right, you have to, you have to save room for dessert. Isn't that what they say? And maybe even we have dessert first. Or maybe this is an overnight visit. And we all get up in the morning and just have dessert for breakfast. So here are our desserts. We've got vegan pumpkin pie. Like, right, that sounds amazing. Vegan gingerbread cookies. Vegan peppermint chocolate fudge. A vegan eggnog cheesecake. And then vegan chocolate truffles. All of these sound amazing. And I would also probably ask, for some recipes that don't include refined sugar for me. I mean, you're welcome to have some of my um, sugar-free desserts, but I'm just saying I would want a dessert I could eat as well. So maybe there'll be a really yummy apple crisp that we can have that chat AI recommend because I love that stuff. And then I asked for treats for our inner child. Because, right, we still need some more treats because it's Christmas. 
So ChatGPT recommends vegan hot chocolate. Sounds awesome, right? This rich and creamy hot chocolate is made with plant-based milk and chocolate and can be topped with whipped cream and marshmallows. Vegan, of course. Vegan sugar cookies, because who does not want to decorate cookies on Christmas, right? With icing and sprinkles, for sure. Vegan fruit kebabs. (laughs) Kids will love these colorful and fun fruit kebabs, which can be made with a variety of fruit and served with a dip. And I'm kind of having this memory of seeing something on social media that involved strawberries and marshmallows for a Santa hat, like making a Santa out of strawberries and marshmallows. Why not? Sounds good. Vegan chocolate chip cookies for sure. And vegan Rice Krispie treats. So of course we would have to get the vegan marshmallows. So that is a suggested menu from ChatGPT, Artificial Intelligence, bringing together a lovely vegan menu for us to gather together in the astral realm for a lovely Christmas party. So, isn't that fun? I got to write a story and I got to make a delicious menu for us. And Just so you know, I could also ask it to give me the recipes for all these dishes, and then I could ask it to make a shopping list. I could ask it to calculate the calories, although everyone knows there are no calories when it comes to Christmas or Hanukkah or any other good holiday. So I had a lot of fun gathering this up for you between the story and the menu and I'm so grateful that I could bring some of the holiday joy to you. I'm continuing to listen to Christmas carols and feeling the sweetness of this time of year, and I hope that you are too. So my beautiful, beloved friends, I say thank you for allowing me to spend this time with you. My hope is you find it graceful to drift off to sleep and I wish you the sweetest of dreams. I wish you goodness and light. I wish you miracles of love. So you rest well and we'll connect again soon. I love you and thank you. (laughs) 